Now people should be able to hear us. If anybody's watching. So, hello everyone. Hello! And welcome back once again to Belmont Bunch. Today we're talking about day one of NHL free agency and non-Islanders stuff. And also, now people should be able to hear us. If anybody's watching. <laughs> so... Hello, uh, everyone. Like that, uh, Hello! Like, uh, and welcome back once again to Belmont Bunch. Today we're talking about hey, day one of NHL Free Agency. I think it's going well. And uh, non Islanders. And now people should be able to hear us. Uh, if anybody's watching. <laughs> so, hello, uh, everyone. Like that, uh, hello! Like the, uh, and welcome back right, once um, again to Belmont Bunch. We should probably start with the Islanders because it's very short. And there's not much about it. Um, yes, let's right. start with the Islanders. So, the Islanders, I had tweeted at Belmont Punch. I didn't tweet at them, that's the account. Uh, I had tweeted that I was expecting today to maybe be like a deluge of information and stuff actually happening because the Islanders need to do things to create cap space to sign the players that they have to. And uh, that has not happened still. You can keep on going. Keep on going the the yeah. biggest the biggest news um, thus far is just the Kiefer Bellows suspension that already has been applied. So, I mean, since that was the only news there was today for the Islanders, really, other than uh, Elliot Friedman giving a, a, a quick, you know, uh, talk about how Andy Green is still a possibility for the Islanders, and we saw Andrew Gross from Newsday talked about how the the, the possibility of Varlamov being moved to create cap space and then re-signing Grice to be the 1A, 1B with Shirokin, uh this coming year. But other than that, I mean, it's Fort Lou. You don't hear anything from Lou uh, in terms of rumors, really. I saw, I think it was Dave Pagnota uh, from the fourth period also talk about, uh, this is one of the only like actual rumors that I saw um, was that the Islanders we're kicking the tires on Dadanov and Vladislav Nemestikov, one of my favorite names in the league. But both of those players, that's fine. I think they're looking in decent areas. I would like Anthony Duclair. I think it's a, a, a Leonard situation where it's a guy looking for a prove-it deal, and uh, the Islanders might only be able to afford a prove-it deal when they're done you know, signing the big three of Barzal, Pulak, Pollock and Taves. So we'll see what happens there. Um, but honestly, not a ton from the Islanders today. And that is a little bit worrying. Teams that we can look at for trades of Boychuk or uh, God, please, lad, um, to create cap space. Uh, Buffalo has a ton of cap space. And Ottawa. Ottawa, uh, who traded, uh, traded for Eric Good Goodbranson from Anaheim. Uh, they still need to take on money to get to the cap floor. So I want the Islanders to be on the phone with them all day, every day. Um, I think Dave Pagnota had also mentioned that there were talks uh, between Lou and Pierre Dorian about Boychuk going to Ottawa. And that is what I talked about in my video the other day, uh, going into the Islanders uh, offseason. And let's hope that that's still in play because I still think Boychuk, who is a player that still has something to give, even at an older age. Uh, he's got two more years at $6 million. The Senators need $10 million more to get to the cap floor, so I think that's a perfect match. You're getting a guy that's going to be able to play for your team on the right side, and it's a brutal right side for the Ottawa Senators right now. Why don't you get some Stanley Cup winning experience, put him with either Shabbat or Shalom. <laughs> it's my little joke. Put him with Shabbat or put him with um, uh, a Brandstrom. And, uh, and you know, he could be a good veteran partner. That being said, and awful, awful jokes aside, um, let's talk yeah, about... Yes, the... awful, awful jokes aside. That's the one thing we'll agree on. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the rest of the league, though, as I refresh once again. I, I watched uh, a lot of the free agent quote-unquote frenzy today. They got to change the name of free agent frenzy when freaking the whole first day is depth pieces and and 
Let's talk about the important ones first. Let's talk about the big pieces. What's the record for most amount of uh, transactions done on the first day of free agency? I don't know. But I think it's decreasing. Well, obviously this year because of the money situation, nobody, uh, everybody is in kind of a weird cap spot. Whether it be we need $10 million more to get to the floor or please, dear God, take all of our bad contracts. But let's talk about the big contracts today. Calgary gets the the payday of the day to uh, Jacob uh, Mar- Markstrom from uh, Vancouver. That's uh, it, It's a great, really good player. And the cost isn't bad, but the term will be interesting because it's a guy that, you know, he's going to be 30 already and you're giving him six years. So you got to hope he's decent. Um, I'm watching the Yankee game on the side right now, by the way, and the umpire just got hit straight in the dong by a foul ball. So if my eyes are wandering to that game. It's because of the dong. It's... <laughs> uh, oh, God. Is anybody even watching it? We have four people watching. Woo! Thank you, you 4,000. 4, I don't know. 4,000 people. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 4,000 of you. So it's probably three other people because I, I have the stream up Shut to up. watch the chat. Shut up. Anyway, um, Markstrom to Calgary is going to be interesting. They did need a starting goalie uh, because the big save Dave is more of a backup, it appears. And uh, Talbot, who we will talk about in a second. But Ottawa, Matt Murray. Murray, four years, 6.25 per Interesting. Um, the guy, from what we've seen uh, of his time with the Penguins, two-time Stanley Cup winner, but he struggles a bit with consistency where one year you'll get all good and the next year you'll get all bad. And from what I've heard from Penguins fans, he doesn't have a very good glove hand. So there's a big extensive book on where to shoot on him. And uh, he struggles to... like have a resurgence mid-season. It seems like he's pretty consistently good or bad for a whole season. But uh, that will be interesting. I still think Ottawa has gotten a lot better over the last couple days, counting the draft and now um, a couple of trades and stuff. We'll we'll see. (laughs) Uh, Vancouver. Vancouver signs Holtby. I was in the grocery store when this happened. Uh, Holtby. Holtby, my first impression was wow why you got thatcher demko who you just let go of markstrom to let seize the net um but when i saw the 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 term and the cap uh it's not that bad it's not that bad two years uh 4.3 per um i that's i'll take it i you know they will uh most likely the reason you saw a lot of two-year deals today um is because you're going to see players you're seeing GMs get ready for the Seattle expansion draft. And so you need to expose a certain amount of goalies and you're going to see teams exposing players. Um, Thatcher Demko will be Vancouver's goalie of the future, most likely. And Holtby has a very good shot at being in Seattle next year, which I've actually been telling my friends for a while. So to see it maybe lining up nice, makes me look like no Shadamas. Um, going to interrupt our list because I had written this and then the Leafs signed, uh, who was it? Um, the Leafs signed, uh, TJ Brody and Brody. Uh, this looks like a decent deal where the term might be an issue. Um, but the cap isn't awful. Five years, uh, sorry, four years, 5 million per he's 30 years old. He's a lefty that plays the right hand side. So the Leafs got their right handed defenseman, uh, but he plays left. He, he plays right, but he's left-handed. So they got their guy. Should be a good contract for the first couple of years, I would think. Uh, and so that's that's good. So the Leafs addressed a couple of things today that they did need. We'll see how effective, because they didn't get like you know top dollar guys. But hey, you don't always need that. Um, Washington. Washington goes out and gets Justin Schultz, the offensive defenseman, uh, and he can be kind of brutal. Um, he can be very brutal. Um, but for one second, I'm going to cede the, 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 uh, attention to James as I go upstairs and I get something. Okay. Go for it. Yes. So entertain the people. James. Hello, people. Please be entertained. So yeah, 
Let's see who's watching right now. I don't think I think we have maybe one person, maybe one person watching. Well, thank you for your dedicated uh, loyalty to us setting up this kind of makeshift stream. And so, um, I haven't unfortunately been able to follow what's going on with the with the uh, free agency, um, other than when it comes to the Isles. So you know, hoping for. Uh, I think a bridge deal for Barzal would be like the best case scenario because then we could we can make sure we have Bullock, Bullock and uh, and Taves. Um, I would like to see Broussard back. I saw speculation today. I don't know if Tom brought this up. I saw speculation today that uh, we might try and move um, Varlamov's contract so that we can get Grice back for cheaper, I would imagine, and then have him with Sorokin. So um, I don't like that. I like Varley a lot. I trust him more than more than Grice. You know, Grice was up and down this season. So uh, that would be pretty bad, in my opinion. Uh, and what else did I see about the Isles? Yeah, not much from the Isles, but, uh, it should be a weird, a weird scenario with the, um, with the goalies. Just, uh, continue on that line because the, is that Dan? We have special guests, probably not appearing on camera. I hope oh, we sorry. Them well. We do have our uh, special guest, a cat. We're so Hello. delayed. We're still oh, delayed that I see an empty chair. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. Do we have anyone uh, watching right now? Yes, yes, you are. You're a live 5, audience. Five thousand people. <laughs> we actually have a live audience today. Um, they can hear everything you say, yes. so you know, don't say anything stupid. I'm sure, is the Yankee game on? Yes, it is. Okay. And uh, and so, yes, yeah, yes. in the fridge. I need a beer. Please. So, um, welcome back. Sorry for that. Here's my victory kitty. Um, so, where was I? I was at Washington. Justin Schultz is an interesting pick because I think of him more of a, as an offensive defenseman and Washington needs defensive defensemen. So I kind of thought Washington might be interested in a TJ Brody. That was not the case. So we'll see if Schultz can be rectified in Washington under the new regime of Peter Laviolette. Um, Lundqvist already trusted Laviolette, so I guess Schultz saw Lundqvist and was like, hey, sure, I'll play with him. Dan, um, what are the Rangers' feelings well, on Oh, yeah, Lundqvist? what's your feeling as a Ranger fan of, of Lundqvist signing with Washington? Uh, I don't really love that he signed with Washington, but I don't really think he's going to be a huge factor against us. Cause, I mean, he's... Do you think well, he'll do, purposely he lose like those games to the factor. Rangers? He wasn't a major factor. It's not like he's, you know, 30. Still, uh, he ended up being their third string goalie, basically. Yeah, so I don't think that um, I don't think it's going to be that much of a. Thr- I hate to say it. But mm-hmm. It's just it's kind of like you know. It's like saying goodbye to an old know. friend, but at the same time, he was being way worse at everything. I would have really so liked you... it. If, I, I really would have liked it if he just went to a team in the West, so we could like root for him. And yeah. Also, like, be happy if he wins. That's fair. Instead of like, yeah, because now, now even if I, I'm sure the Ranger fans will mostly be happy for him if he wins, but it is weirder now being a division opponent. It is weirder, and it's kind of like we already have like a playoff rivalry with them of our own right. Mm-hmm. Like that's the team we match up with the most in the last decade or so. Yeah. So like, it's like Yankees Twins in the 2000s. Where it was every <laughs> single year. <laughs> Evil yeah. F. Yeah, and we would beat them. Every single time, except I, we might have lost them once. Like, Almost every time. Almost every time. So it's pretty lopsided. So like we tend to own them pretty well in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. So like you know, throw back to 20, 2009 with the board own. Yeah. Uh, twenty thirteen was the one I think where they were up to twenty fourteen. Uh, they were up three games to one on the Rangers. Uh, twenty fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah. So I did fourteen. The, the, the year fourteen after fifteen. We made yeah. the cup. Mm-hmm. We had a really great series against them. I think in the semis, and then we ended up losing to Tampa. Mm-hmm. Lost to Chicago. Yeah. So like. It was just a, a pile of shit, a cascading <laughs> pile of yeah. everybody who lost to the team that lost. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. yeah w- um, so we were at Schultz. Schultz. Uh, I've already spoken my piece. Uh, Anaheim gets Kevin Shattenkirk. Um, really, really good bit of work from Anaheim. Anaheim trades Good Branson, gets rid of that cap, gets a pick out of a cap dump, and then gets a better defenseman out of it. At a not unreasonable term, at a not unreasonable price. Well done, Anaheim. Really good work there. Uh, so now on the right side, they have uh, Josh Manson, <laughs> Manson, sorry, and uh, Kevin Shattenkirk. Pretty good. Pretty good stuff. I like that a lot. Uh, Anaheim is a team that uh, 
It's kind of middling right now, but could find its way back up. Uh, Minnesota. This is the contract that I didn't like very much at all. Cam Talbot. Wow, a lot of former Rangers on this <laughs> list. Uh, yeah. Cam Talbot, uh, who has... Hey, at least Lundquist didn't go to uh, Tampa Bay. Oh, boy. We would have been, been, what, the fifth Ranger in like 10 yeah, years? Yeah, right? New we York. Just ship him every... Mm. It's starting with like Ryan Callahan. Was He's like, like every New Yorker. Yeah, they go south to retire. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but um, Cam Talbot, three years, 3.67 million. Uh, Bill Guerin already tweeted that he is the starter, Cam Talbot. Um, uh, Minnesota just traded, uh, uh, the Devin Dubnik. And I thought that was okay. Cause you know, Dubnik's getting up there and you want to move on. But I thought that meant they were going to be in on one of the big goalies, but they did not do that. They missed out on a lot of the big goalies and they signed Cam Talbot, who is just fine to a deal that I don't like. And it's got too much term. So I don't like anything about it. Uh, it could be good year one. But it's like a weird one, and Alex Stalock, I think, could end up being um, better and starting. I don't know. Feels like a preventable situation for Minnesota. Uh, Dallas re-signs Anton Hudobin, uh, everybody's favorite Russian, and uh, he is just a joy. He's one of the funnier guys in the league, uh, and uh, that's a good deal. Three years, uh, 3.33 million, and uh, it's it's round it up it's going to be a 10 million dollar contract in total um pretty good i like it he got rewarded for being one of the main pieces to get them uh back to or get them to the cup and i like i like that tandem a lot bishop and uh hudobin has been one of the better tandems in the league over the last couple of years and so i kind of like that deal you could probably say maybe it's too much for a backup, but the Islanders were paying Thomas Grice a comparable amount. Yep. So, uh, and Thomas Grice has not been signed yet, but I yeah, every, he will. Every, I did I did mention that how like I don't know if you said that earlier how uh, they might try and move Varley's contract and sign Grice back. Yeah. It's conceivably cheaper, I suppose. It's interesting. Uh, yeah, he would be cheaper, Grice, and how that much would is, how much? How much is Varley making? Varley's making five and a half. And how long is his contract? Three or four more years. Okay. So, so that's an interesting one. I mean, that's probably what? That's probably, like, pretty good for a goalie, I would imagine. Oh, like, yeah. That's, like, I mean, pretty like, middle of the road, like, for a good goalie. Yeah, they, yeah. it could have been a lot worse. I, uh, Robin Lehner just got five years, 5.5, which looks like a really nice deal right now. Isn't that exactly the... what Varley has? Yeah, that's, oh, what, yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah, exactly yeah. what Varley yeah. signed. So that's interesting. I think Lehner's the better goalie, so yeah. I think they got really good value. For Vegas. some reason, though, Lehner, according to you, mm-hmm. he's like everybody's, like, hesitant that he might fall off. That seems well, to be because yeah, he wasn't I, and, good and then he was really good. Well, it was more, I think it was for years, he was being buried with mm. uh, two awful teams, um, Buffalo and Ottawa. And they were terrible defensively and he had personal stuff going on. He has since, uh, mm. you know, worked really hard to get past that stuff and has also coincided with going to better teams. Uh, like not the, as much like the Chicago. Islanders. Yeah, with the well, the Islanders last year were the best defensive team in the league, so that helped him a lot. This year, he played for Chicago for a bit, and his stats went down. But of course, they're going to go down because Chicago isn't good defensively. Goes to Vegas, plays really, really well. So yeah, it shows if he has a good defense in front of him, he's going to be really, really good. Um, Chicago, this is another re-sign uh, instead of a, a new a player to a new team. Dominic Kubalik, uh, two years, three point seven million. That I like. It's a nice little bridge deal for a guy that came over and was absolutely fantastic in his rookie year. Um, he got nominated for the Calder. He was really, really good. And I think he was like everything that Chicago wanted Brandon Saad to be, but better. So, good signing for Chicago. Florida, uh, Radko Gudis is a really, really tough defenseman. Uh, he's an enforcer type. And... I don't know if I like the term. Um, I believe he's getting close to 30. I guess the term isn't the end of the world, uh, but if he's going to be a bottom pairing defenseman, 2.5 is a tiny bit steep. Tiny bit steep. Could be worse. Um, but Florida, who also acquired, uh, was it Nudavara? Yes. Nudavara on the left side from Columbus. Um, they're basically remaking their whole defense. Uh, which is probably a good idea for Florida because they've already spent all the money on goaltending and it hasn't worked. So what's the next thing you could do is improve your defense to make it easier for that goalie. So we'll see how that goes. Florida had an active day. Florida also gets Alexander Wenberg on the 
you know, the deal that I kind of want for Anthony Duclair. One year, $2.25 million. Uh, it's basically a show-me-what-you-got deal. Uh, he's going to play third-line center, I think, for Florida. So there's not a lot of pressure in that uh, role. And I, I like it. It's not. It's pretty low risk. So like that deal. Uh, Edmonton, Kyle Turris, another low, another uh, low risk uh, third line center probably. Uh, Edmonton's going to have pretty good center depth with uh, McDavid, Nugent Hopkins, or Drysaddle, whoever plays center at McDavid, the second who, line. Uh, had Corona. Head. Oh yes, yeah. yeah, McDavid had Corona. We'll I guess see, he still hopefully has. Hopefully he's okay. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Was there an echo in here? <laughs> so what was that? It what? sounded what? like a Rangers fan. Um, Turris, I like the steal. Turris is getting out of a situation that didn't work out for him in Nashville. And, uh, you know, get get a good shot in Edmonton uh, with a high-flying offense and with uh, improved coaching over the last year, as we saw when I predicted them to go seventh in their division, and they were a lot better than that. So, yes. Um, Toronto, let's... Uh, but what about Toronto? I hear you screaming. Nobody ever talks about Toronto. We need to talk about Toronto. <sighs> Toronto signs Wayne Simmons for one year, $1.5 million. It's good in that it's very low risk. It is the idea of what Kyle Dubas has talked about where he wants to make them tougher to play. Um, and a guy like Wayne Simmons, who has been known as a bit of a grinder uh, and a power forward, is somebody that can do that for you. But I think it was Dom Lashushkin, uh, his model is not very favorable to uh, Wayne Simmons, uh, in his, in, who's now in his 30s. And uh, we'll have to see. I actually think Toronto, and I don't want to speak this into existence, but Toronto should probably be in on Matt Martin. They've, they had no. him in the past. They, we got him back from matter. Toronto. He became an Islander. But I think if Dubas is serious about making Toronto tougher to play physically, then Matt Martin has to be on their short list because the Islanders, as we've talked about, are still working out their cap situation. And Matt Martin can't just wait for the Islanders to figure it out. You got to get a job where you can. I mean, it depends on where he wants to play. And like, they might have had the conversation, like mm. you know, like they could say, "Yes, we do want to sign you." There's like a whatever percentage, like you know. Oh, I don't I'm, know. I'm, he might not. Yeah. Who knows? Like he might legit be okay with not playing for the Islanders. Well, I think it's well, you know, because at like Hudobin had a similar situation where he was in touch with. Dallas the whole time mm-hmm. he he told Dallas I'm going to test free agency and Dallas was like cool uh, but he w- said he wanted to go back to Dallas but mm-hmm. he was just going to test free agency and see if he got like a crazy deal he didn't Dallas said hey welcome back and he got a nice little deal that is probably a similar situation that's going to happen to Martin mm-hmm. but um at the same time Martin I mean like you, you, you got it you can't fault the guy for just taking a, a certain job if he's offered it Instead of yeah. the Islanders, who you don't know where their situation is going to be. Best. So that's all the more reason for the Islanders to figure it out sooner rather yeah, than later. Yeah, absolutely. But that is interesting because it's like, imagine if you told your boss at like a company, like, I'm just going to like look for another jobs for like, you know, a month. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then if I don't find anything, you can hire me back. I mean, I've, like, I've heard of it happening. Oh, yeah. With, with yeah. sports, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. You know, but especially oh, yeah, since sport. everybody's watching and, you mm-hmm. know. Tom, that's a nice visitor's jersey. Oh, thanks. I got this last year at the stadium. I, I didn't have like a real jersey. I had like an old jeter with the pinstripes but it was like you knew it was fake because it had the name jeter on it so this one is legit i kind of want to get a, a, a player on it but i don't know who to get i don't, I don't dd was my favorite yankee i don't typically love the yankee road all right we have we've spoken we, about this we've spoken about this it's mm-hmm. too yeah i don't know yeah but i like their the spring jersey, trainings a lot this jersey is nice yeah um back to hockey yeah. Jeez, thanks so, for distracting us he's wearing a baseball Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. How um, how insensitive of you? Well, the Yankees are playing an elimination like, game. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, last... we could just change this title of stream and turn <laughs> yeah. it into yeah. Last but certainly not least, uh, Henrik Lundqvist uh, is in Washington on a one year, one point five million dollar deal. That one point five is deceptive, deceptive because he is getting one point five from the Capitals, but the Rangers are paying him three million as part of the buyout, so he is still a very rich man. So do not feel. Too bad for him. Yeah, because it, you couldn't tell since before this deal that he was rich, but now you. Know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah. wait, we gotta, we gotta. Oh, do we have? A question? Yeah, we have a question. Do you guys know that the Leafs signed T.J. Brody? Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's not on the board. We talked about it uh, earlier, 
Um, cause we have the board all set up and everything. And then the, the leaves have to go and sign somebody, yeah. but the, the leaf sign classic Brody. leaf fashion, <laughs> right? Last minute. You know, uh, yeah. But Brody, um, Brody sounds like it'll be a pretty decent signing. I saw Dom Lushishkin's, uh, um, graph of, it shows like if a player is starting to fall off a cliff, uh, you know, when they get older and yeah. you start to decline and it looks like Brody isn't quite there yet, which is good. Brody is 30. He's left-handed but plays the right side, and the Leafs needed somebody to play the right side. So it's uh, probably a good signing, I would think. But we also thought the same about Tyson Berry, I guess. But Brody is a little bit more, I don't know, stronger defensively. Uh, So that's what the Leafs are looking for. So I actually think the Leafs, um, in terms of going out for what they needed to get, in terms of what they've been talking about, we need to be tougher to play. I think they got better than they were today at, at being tougher to play. Look, at, I, I think they're modeling themselves after Tampa, uh, who got tougher, paid a first-rounder to get Barkley Goodrow, but then it worked. Um, and, you know, they kept Pat Maroon. They re-signed Pat Maroon today. Uh, so Tampa Bay has really, really figured out, you know, top two lines, we have a ton of talent. Bottom two, we have talent, but they're also, like, gritty, borderline dirty, and in the playoffs, that plays really well. So... Tampa Bay is in a good spot uh, going forward still. Uh, and Lundqvist we talked about. So that's basically all the big signings. Uh, let's talk about some of the trades that happened uh, ahead of the trade deadline. One that happened today during the trade deadline. Paul Stastny is going back to Winnipeg from Vegas. Uh, Vegas in return is getting uh, Dahlstrom, who's minor league slash seventh defenseman, and a conditional 2022 fourth rounder. So... Uh, Winnipeg got the news that Brian Little uh, heard from doctors that he should not play hockey this year. And uh, so they got a second line center, uh, one that they already know pretty well. So, you know, assuming they hold on to um, line A uh, and, you know, they still have a great first line center in Shifley if he's healthy, Winnipeg should be okay, uh, hopefully. And, you know, their goaltending is still really good. I really like Winnipeg. I think they're my favorite team in the West. So uh, I, I want to see them figure it out and also trade line A to the Islanders. Um, Ryan Murray got sent to the New Jersey Devils for a fifth in next year's draft. So basically a cap dump by Cal- uh, Columbus. And Columbus is probably going to try to make a move for one of the big dogs. And who are those big dogs? Oh, look, he was prepared. Uh, Petrangelo, Hall, Hoffman, Dadanov, Crawford, Grice, still all not signed. I Is think- there enough room up here? Nah. It'll block the... Nah, just leave it. It's not a big deal. Fuck you guys. Um, you Sorry. guys know. You guys know what's up. But uh, Grice, I, I could see Grice going to the Devils, which is really? going to be tough. Their well, the Devils have um, Mackenzie Blackwood, yeah, who's, who's a young who's a goalie who amazing. played really, really well last yeah. year. And uh, they need a backup because they bought out Corey Schneider. And um, I think Grice is a really good fit for a one or a two year because it would be, I feel like it'd be an even trade, you know, green for grace. Kind of like. <laughs> Actually, yeah. yeah. Well, we might not even be able to bring back green. That's so true, we're in a yeah. weird spot. Yeah. Cause grace at least has like, like could play for another three years. or four Yeah. Years. Yeah. He's yeah. 34, but yeah. he's sh- uh, shown that he's still a capable goalie mm-hmm. for sure. Um, he made appearances in the playoffs and played pretty well. Yeah. Uh, well, I wait, think every team is chasing that tandem now. Wasn't his save percentage like technically really low though? Because he only played in like one or two games. Yeah, so. I think it's uh, deceptive when a guy oh, doesn't play a ton of time. It sucks because he definitely wasn't that bad. It, no. it just like it went down when he was playing Tampa. I think yeah, that was well. Yeah. He, Tampa sunk uh, <laughs> both the goalies. Um, anyway, so what's the big deal? That's it. I'm what's the away. deal? With what's the though? what's the big headline of today? Goalies dominate. Mm-hmm. There was a, a point, now this is going to be an out-of-date stat, but there was a point earlier uh, when there were fewer signings. Uh, but this hasn't been changed that much because all the signings since um, Markstrom got signed by Calgary earlier, uh, except for Brody, that was a bigger deal. They were all basically minor league deals. So goalies dominated today. And at one point in today, they they six, 62% of the dollars spent today went to goalies. Which wow. is kind of crazy. Well, I mean, I guess I mean we're, we'd expect to see like less goalie action. Yes, for the rest. Of the there was a big season. goalie market, and we knew there was a big goalie market. It's kind of like uh, in football. There were a lot of quarterbacks last year. There was a big carousel of quarterbacks: Jameis Winston, Tom Brady, Philip Rivers, people in new places. And you're seeing that with Lundquist. 
uh, Talbot, Holtby, Murray, Markstrom, people, uh, starting goalies, finding new homes. Um, I mean, Lundqvist is going to be the backup to Samsonov, but uh, other than that, a lot of these guys are going to start. So, um, I'm trying to think of what else we have, because at some point, like, there's not a, a ton of hockey stuff going on. We could just start to, like, I don't know, shoot the shit, or see, uh, no, uh, if you got a question, oh, what did Jonas say? Get cold. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Jonas is a big Yankee fan uh, who has an uh, awesome podcast as well. Garrett Cole, he said. Oh, yeah, he was saying get Cole. Get Cole. Cole yeah. was pitching So Cole, because Cole in the first inning, oh. there we go. Uh, Cole um, loaded the bases with two outs, went 3 0 on uh, Joey Wendell, and then threw three strikes by him in a row. That's the only reason we're still tied. Um, Hey, you had to know you're gonna get some baseball stuff. I'm wearing a baseball jersey, but um, yeah, it's currently on right now. Yeah, and it's currently on. Let me see if I got anything on my phone in terms of questions from the viewers. How many are there right now? There's four viewers. Four thousand. <laughs> yeah, four four K. Forty K. Lower K. Lower Did K. you say forty K? He said four hundred K. Four hundred K. That's awesome. No, I said four M. What? Four million? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So to our four million viewers, thank you so much. Um, that was my chair. That wasn't my ass. Don't yeah, worry. They're all bounce. Um, uh, <laughs> so I don't know. What else is there to talk yeah, I about? Know. I have not followed it closely as you just really did some Islander oh, stuff. And not um, that let, let me go some uh, some funny storylines out of uh, some of the minor league signings. Um, Vegas re-signed their first ever player. Um, no, I'm not saying they re-signed a player for the first time ever. They re-signed Reed Duke, who was their first signing as a franchise. Wow. Who has never played in the NHL at all. He's basically a minor leaguer, but they re-signed him. And I thought that was great just because... It's poetic. Why not keep the guy yeah. that who was your first... I know that. That is ingrained in my head. That is going to be trivia in the future. Who was the Vegas Golden Knights' first ever player? And everybody's going to be like, uh, Marc-Andre Fleury or Calvin yeah. Pickard? But no, it's Reed Duke, who's never going to play in the NHL. Um, anything else in terms of meme-type stuff? Um, mm, oh, great one. Alan Quine, Islanders legend, scored a double overtime goal in the playoffs in 2016 mm -hmm. as a call-up, a minor league call-up. Wow. Uh, he never really did anything after that. He had a great series in that series out of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, and then signed um, a couple years later with Calgary's farm system. He signs with Edmonton's farm system today, so I will continue to look at Alan Qu uh, Quine's career with great interest, <laughs> even though there's not much going on. The Rangers made a bunch of signings, not, uh, all minor league signings, basically. Oh, no, I forgot about... There's a big meme. So the Rangers signed basically four minor league players and an extra goalie. That's good. You know, it, minor league depth. Uh, and it was funny because a bunch of them were all former Devils, so it was like that cross-town oh, rivalry. Yeah. But the big meme is that the Rangers signed the objective worst player in the league to a contract. Uh, Jack Johnson, who statistically and by the eye test is the worst defenseman in all of hockey... The Rangers sign on a one-year, $1 million deal. For, Obviously, for the that's... minors, or...? No, to play. Yep. That's surprising. GMs have always loved him because he's huge! I, I want to defend this. <laughs> defend it. Yeah, defend, defend the worst player in the league signing with your team. I I don't, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, he's hot! I can't. I can't. <laughs> that's the only defense, I guess, if you thought he was good-looking. Oh, um... Yeah, that's a really bad signing, but I, I actually think there's a good chance the Rangers are just going to have him be the extra guy that just sits in the booth most nights. You hope, but because why, if he plays, that's why not they sign good. Him, then? Um, like what, what, I don't know. I don't old, know. How I'm going to be he? honest. Aaron Judge, Aaron Judge, Aaron Judge, Aaron Judge, one nothing Yankees. Aaron Judge, he I'm finally sure did a thing. Say, he's hitting 107, but he has three home He runs. hasn't done <laughs> anything in this series. Um, and it's one nothing Yankees. How old is uh, the defenseman? I forgot who. I don't remember. His he's name. like mid thirties. Oh, what? So he's yeah. like definitely not. So, he's old, so well, let's better. go through the things he's bad at. Hockey. Um, <laughs> he's probably better than you at hockey. Oh, so. ob ob uh, <laughs> yeah. objectively, maybe. Um, so Jack Johnson, worst defenseman in the league. 
Um, we should get, we should put together a hockey league where it's just the people that can't get contracts. <laughs> so. It's called the minor leagues. No, no, no. Like, can't even get minor league oh, contracts. It's called the U.S. Uh, Is there actually, uh, like, another league? Yeah, there's, there's like, 800 leagues. Oh, my God. We should make one. The Belmont Bunch League. Oh, boy. Anyway, um, any any other memes in here? Um, doesn't really look like it. Uh, Arizona, because they didn't have... Arizona's in a really bad spot, and I feel really bad. Um, Arizona, who lo- got docked their first two round picks because of draft tampering. Yep. Uh, they're going to lose Taylor Hall, um, who was their big acquisition of the trade deadline last year because they don't have the money to sign him, and he doesn't want to be back anyway. Their GM quit on the job mid-contract um, to join like a sports betting group or something like that. So they had a really, really tumultuous year. And their only signing today, I believe, was Tyler Pitlick, who uh, and and John Hayden, who's like a depth piece. But they signed like Tyler Pitlick, and he's like a fourth liner at best. And they paid him one point seven five. He was okay with Philly. Wait, I feel so, like Arizona's in a weird so spot. So the, the whole thing with Arizona was that a was that one of those things where everybody does, but they got caught doing it. Um, because it was. I, I don't it was think so. Uh, I think because they the NHL deemed it to be above and beyond, um, mm-hmm. but they were holding like personal workouts, and I don't think you can do that at the NHL. But that that was like for for prospects. Like they have a date for that. The screen is <laughs> that's a great screenshot. Um, so the video I think has been laggy, but the audio has okay. been fine, so it kind of sucks. Yeah. If you're listening, welcome to the podcast. Yeah, uh, hey, yeah. you don't have to see our faces as much, so that's good. Yeah. Um, but we're getting at least one frame per second. <laughs> can it run Skyrim? No, no, probably not even. No, my calculator can run Skyrim. Um, but um, I don't know. I, I don't know if we have that much more even to talk about other than... Yeah, I mean, we've been judging. going for 40, almost 45 minutes, yeah. so um, I think it's a good place to kind of end it. Um, should we finish uh, back no. with the Islanders? Nope. Yes, we should. <laughs> okay. Um, so, in terms of now, I mean, I did an overview on the Islanders at the beginning, but uh, let's, I mean, a little bit worried uh, because I'm not really worried that Barzal is going to get an offer sheet because um, one of the only things that came out of Islanders camp today was that that's never that's absolutely not happening. So that's good. Barzal not getting offer sheeted. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, no team is probably in any position to do that. And if they did, they'd have to give the Islanders like five first round picks. Yeah, and yeah. it's just an absurd price and you're not going to. And even if I'm the Islanders and even if that makes me better in the future, no. Because he's our best player, and it's if actually he like, was a, like if it, he was like a player that wasn't liked by the fans for some reason, that's understandable. Well, not even because it's a but he's loved. It's a principled thing about they ju- like we've all, like they can't redo the Tavares situation. They can't. They can't How lose their best player. Again. Oh yeah, yeah, they can't yeah. lose their best player. Yeah, yeah, again, and this time it wouldn't be for nothing. Double negative. This, um, but. They just can't, like, out of principle, they can't lose their best player twice in two years. Mm -hmm. Twice in three years. Um, But, yeah. Uh, A Quinnipiac kid got signed. uh, Matthew Pekka, uh, one year, uh, 700K. Man, NHL league minimum is is a pretty good bet. Yeah, right? Like, I wouldn't make it 700K a year. That would be great. Mm -hmm. Instead of, like, making... Are you even paying me at Belmont Punch? (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, um, but for the Islanders... Um, keep an eye out. There's not going to be a lot of rumors though, because Lou runs a tight ship. We didn't even know about the Bellows stuff, which I guess until happened after it was done. Basically. Until after yeah. the season was done. Yeah. Although the AHL season didn't even have a playoff, so they've been done for a while. But um, also don't overreact to the Bellows stuff because, I mean, everybody was putting words in the mouth of. Look, go to the AHL's um piece. It's like a. Less than a paragraph. It basically just says he was suspended. He already served it. It was yeah. just like a thing. So it might hurt his trade value a tiny bit, but that's he's that's six it. five. No, I was talking about Dobson is six five. Oh, well, how tall? He might be taller than that. I don't know. Holy shit! But yeah, anyway, Dobson, no, no. I, I, I for some reason I get those two confused because I like I don't know what Bellows looks like, but I, I they're, know they're both Dobson. very young. Yeah. So I think Bellows is twenty two. Dobson is twenty. Mm. Um. I guess the only thing left is to bitch about something uh, NHL did. NHL 21 yeah. is coming out. Uh, and, did you know the date for that? Uh, next, it's next week. I don't know the Are exact date. Are you getting it? Date. I'm 50-50 on it. 
Um, I was interested. It did check the check marks. Uh, I remember a while back, I said, uh, you asked me, yeah. what are the minimum requirements for you to get this game? And I said, it needs a story mode. It needs the franchise to be tweaked. Mm -hmm. uh, and it needs... I guess the gameplay... I actually kind of like the gameplay, so I guess that was... Uh, people wanted roster sharing, so you can do stuff o online with each other. But um, they did do the story mode, and that was a big one of my things. And we could stream me playing the story mode, so that would yeah, be kind of so fun. Yeah, I'd be fine with that. Uh, but we'll see. I'm kind of like 50... Because I know I'm getting Cyberpunk, so I'm like... Yeah, yeah. Where can I spend well, the dollars? Cyberpunk is uh, November, right? Yes. Yeah, so there's time. So, there's time. So I saw a meme... All right, wait, just so everybody in the stream knows, Dan, who's off camera, is talking, who's yes. going to be lower. Yes. Excuse All right. Me. Yeah. Uh, Speak louder. Yeah, uh, just so you know, I saw a meme before that was really funny. It was, um, I'm not sure if it was FIFA this year or previous year, mm -hmm. but the point kind of stands anyway. Uh, it was a tweet that someone said where it was like, FIFA for the Switch was copy and pasted again. It was, literally, and said, yeah. And then they said, uh, the, the reviewer magazine, might have been Game Informer, just said, so we just gave it, we gave it the same grade, then lowered it, because... <laughs> Good, <laughs> I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like so that. We, we judged it the exact same way, and then gave it a grade lower, saying, well... <laughs> Good, I like that. Yeah. Because they, they, like, they do do that. Like, yeah. Because, I mean, to a certain extent, you have to understand, uh, for NHL, NHL... I think has the smallest development group out of any of the sports, the major sports franchises. Because FIFA, yeah. FIFA is worldwide. It gets a ton of support. Same for Madden. It's not world. Well, Xbox, actually, I bet you Microsoft loves FIFA because so many people rage quit and throw their Xboxes <laughs> out windows and then like, buy a new one. Yeah, exactly. Um, but NHL <laughs> has the smallest uh, developer group, so it's a lot of work for them to improve the game a ton. Um, and I don't blame the people actually making the game. Usually it's the business decisions that they're making to allocate in certain areas that the people do they, working on the game can't even. Yeah. But I mean, like my guess is they just, they probably just follow the statistics. Like we know the size of this market. We're not going to put any more resources. So we get the same return on investment yeah. or whatever. So like, that's, it's that, all bullshit. But yeah, I mean, it's not, it's business, but mm -hmm. like, which is bullshit. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but it, 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 it it's tough, but I'm, I don't know, I'm 50-50 on it. Adam Pellich is a 78, which is absolute horse shit. Well, that was not in 21. Yes, in 21. No. Yes. They That's awful. Well, because look, I, uh, there was a video, because EA, it, it's available with EA Play, mm -hmm. so people are able to play it right now, oh. um, but like the ratings are almost exact to last year, uh, so like, How, that's one of Pellich the big things. is only 25 though, right? Uh, I don't know, but like. He, so it's like I was surprised he didn't go up. Well, here's the thing: for defensemen, they they only really care about the guys that are offensive. Yeah. So the guy could be a terrible defenseman, but he could be an 85 overall because he puts up 40 points a year as a defenseman. Um, <laughs> Adam Pellich, who's one of the best defensive defensemen in the league, uh, 78 overall, barely an NHLer according to the game. So you know I'm gonna be boot, uh, boosting because you can. Um, you can edit the the ratings. Oh wow! Uh, and create your own rosters, and I'll probably boost him up to like eighty five. Just go to a hundred. <laughs> why not? Oh, yeah. I'll put his poke check to ninety nine. Yeah. Uh, but hey, wh why don't we wrap it up? Because uh, we we chased everybody out of here anyway. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> All oh, right. I, I I think it's unfortunately the stream is laggy for some reason. So yeah. I blame you. All right, I'm gonna check. You know what I'm gonna internet. do? I'm gonna check one more time, and uh, make sure nothing else gigantic happened. Fuck. <laughs> I think something else gigantic. What out. happened? It looks like Tory Krug is going to the St. Louis Blues. Uh, so, hold on one sec. As we look at this. Tory Krug. Oh, boy. All right, so Elliot Friedman, four minutes ago, said he is hearing that Tory Krug is going to St. Louis. If that is true, then uh, St. Louis is almost definitely not getting uh, Alex Petrangelo back. But Tory Krug is a very, 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 very good consolation prize uh, as one of the better power play uh, quarterbacks in the league and one of the better offensive defensemen. Uh, so good signing. I like it a lot for the Blues. The Blues wanted to do something drastic after, um, well, first of all, probably losing their captain and also going out a little prematurely than people would have thought. The playoffs, interesting move. Uh, we, we haven't seen the money yet, but the guy, I believe Krug is still, uh, 28. 
unless they like gave him the full seven year deal. Even then, I don't know. I don't think it's bad. Um, so yeah, I guess we, we could still probably finish up here. Um, that's interesting. Big bombshell, probably the biggest signing of the day. And it happened after we did most of the stuff. Ah, classic Belmont Punch faction. We just oh, ahead of the curve. That's that's sure our, you could say that's that. Our thing. You guys are like the press that gets the news a little bit too late. No, too uh, er- no, no, no. We like yeah, exactly. We already we just printed our story, yes. and then the story, like the bigger story, happens yes, exactly. Yeah. Yes. So anyway, it's like Newsday. <laughs> Does that actually happen on Newsday? Oh yeah, all the time. Really? They miss sports news because it goes too late, which other papers just don't. Huh. They also miss stuff that happens overnight. Mm. They print it like too early. I don't know. That's actually pretty interesting. I guess it kind of makes sense. Like they're like they'll hear about something before it's big enough. I guess, and then yeah, I don't know. Like like for example, like, like local. I'm talking Trump, about yeah. The Trump COVID thing last yeah. week when it broke overnight. Like they did not have it at all in their paper mm. and every other news outlet online. They oh, so they were just but, late on it. Yeah, they were just yeah. yeah. I, don't I mean that's that's expected from a local the other place. Hard mm. Were able to fit that in and they weren't so. But, who gets their news from paper anymore? Come on, everybody! <laughs> everybody gets updates from. <laughs> no, I, no, I can understand reading it to get actual like actual news, but just like news updates. You yeah, know? no news updates. I always get it from. Uh, this is way off topic. <laughs> but, yeah. Why don't we end the stream? Yeah, end the stream. <laughs> I was gonna end the stream. Anyway. Oh, the stream's ended. Which oh, is, you, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's do a sign off. All right. Yes. Um. Thank you. To the two million of you watching, um, thank you guys uh, for the guys and gals watching. Um, keep an eye out for because I'm gonna have to do a pop up video the minute the Islanders do something. So um, who knows when that'll be? So I guess I'll just have to sit in front of my TV for eight continuous days without doing anything. So wait, that's actually less than normal. Hmm? No, usually he sits for nine continuous days. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Thank you, so, thank you, Dan. That's the video. Off screen, or that's the stream, I guess. Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, we'll see you. I'm trying to think of when we'll do another live stream. There's nothing quite ready we yet. Try, I think the idea is we do want to try and do them at least once a week. Just just like to have conversations with people and, and also see what's going on. So obviously right we now. Hey, hey, hey. I'm talking. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, so, the, um, yeah. So once I think every Friday was what we originally tried to do a few weeks ago. And then we didn't really do it for a while. Kind of whatever just covid stuff you know and playoffs um, and, and yeah and then playoffs are happening and so uh so we would like to get to it and whether it, we're talking about football baseball or hockey we'll you know mm-hmm. every friday probably around seven i think that's the goal yeah sure that's the goal so anyway what were you gonna say uh just we uh you know, keep an eye out for the the jets loss recap this weekend oh uh game recap my bad um <laughs> and playing? arizona um oh that's a loss yeah, yeah. sure yeah. uh but that's uh, that's it. We'll see you next time on Belmont Bunch. I'm Ron Burgundy. Good night, San Diego.